Hey guys, so I was recently going through an example of dynamic delta hedging, and specifically I was looking at the most famous derivatives book, uh, John Hall's Options, Futures, and Other Derivatives, and I came across this example of dynamic delta hedging, and there's two tables in there, figure 19.2 and figure 19.3, and basically it's going through an example of how you can dynamically hedge delta based on the changes in stock prices every week. And I just found it a bit confusing because I thought there's some more columns that could be included. So I banged my head against the wall trying to figure out how this is working. And so I implemented into Excel. So let's jump right over into Excel to show how this example's actually working. And I'm gonna tick and tie to all of the numbers that he got. So we can start off with just the week, which is just going to be a hard-coded value. And basically, we're starting at week 20, and then we're going down. And really what's happening this year here is we're assuming that we had shorted 100,000 call options or 1,000 call option contracts because there's 100 shares that underlie each contract. So if you have a thousand contracts, you're basically short 100,000 call options. So what we want to do is basically make it so that if there are minor price movements in the prices of these options, then we will not be exposed to losses. We won't be exposed to gains either. So basically, in order to hedge our short call option position, we need to buy shares of the underlying stock that underlie this call option. And we need to do that based on the delta so that our total position delta is equal to or close to zero. And so what you can see here is that we're looking at a stock that has a volatility of 20%. That volatility is maintained throughout the entire um, life of this uh basically example, we have an interest rate, so a risk-free rate of 5%, and these options assume a strike price of $50. So these call options can be exercised if the stock price exceeds $50. One thing we need to know in Black-Scholes, it's one of the five inputs, is the time left in years. So that's easy for us to find because we can just take the number of weeks and divide it by 252, and that gives us this T, this time value. We shoot the formula all the way down. By the time there's zero weeks left, there's no time left to maturity on these options. Now, the stock price is just going to change every week, and these are just hard-coded values that I took directly from that John Hole example that you can see here. So I just typed them in exactly as they were. And now in order to calculate delta, we first need to calculate D1. And so D1 can be calculated with the formula that you see here. It says D1 is equal to the natural logarithm of the stock price, so D9, divided by the strike price K, which I've locked in here, plus the risk-free rate, which is D4, which I locked in, plus um, the volatility squared. And so then we need to divide by two, which I just multiplied by 0.5, and then we need to multiply that component by time, which is T here. So this right here is our entire numerator, and then we just need to divide by this denominator, which is just D3, the volatility locked in, and multiplied by T to the square root, and you can just do two, the exponent of 0.5 is the same as taking the square root. So that gives us D1 for each of these, and I just shot it all the way down. And so, Something that you can uh, take away from D1 is basically there's sort of an informal way of thinking about the probability of the option expiring in the money. And D1 is really a measurement of this probability. So if D1 is close to zero, that tells us that there is a near 50-50 chance of whether or not this option will expire in the money. And that happens when the stock price is nearest to 
the strike price. And then as the uh, stock price starts to exceed the strike price, there's a higher probability of this option expiring in the money. And then you'll see the value of D1 becoming more and more positive in that situation. Whereas if the stock price is getting much lower than the strike price, you'll see the D1 value getting more negative because it's less probable that this option expires in the money. And you can really see that effect come into play when you take a look at delta. Here's the formula, delta equals N of D1, which is basically just taking this um, normal distribution and basically saying, hey, what's the probability that this option expires in the money based on this D1 value? So when you have a lower, more negative D1, it's really saying there's about a 40% chance that this option expires in the money. But when, when you have a more higher D1 because the stock price exceeds the strike price by a greater value, you end up with this delta that is saying there's, hey, there's about a 77% chance that this option expires in the money. And then as you get closer to expiration, and we'll see here that, let me lock this in real quick so it's easy to see. So I'm gonna freeze these panes. So if we look at the situation where there's uh, only one week left to expiration, so very little time, the stock price greatly exceeds the strike price, there's about 100% probability that this option is going to expire in the money based on this volatility here. And just to clarify how to calculate delta is you use that equals norm dot dist function. So we're using a normal distribution for the X value of where this D1 value sits within this distribution. We're going to just put D1 and then we're going to assume that it's a standard normal distribution which has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one and for cumulative we'll put true and so now that we have our deltas we're going to know how many shares that we need to buy in order to counter or perfectly balance the total delta of our 100,000 short call options and so to calculate the number of shares that we need to own, we can just take the value of the delta F9 and multiply it by the 100,000. And then as John Hall does, I just rounded it to the nearest 100. So that's when I do round negative two, that just rounds it to the nearest 100. So we need to find that in order to offset our one hundred thousand dollars of or our sorry our one hundred thousand short call options, if they have a delta of 0 0.522, that means we need to buy exactly fifty two thousand two hundred shares, and that will match the value that John Hall has right here. And so this week, week twenty, we are going to buy so bought fifty two thousand two hundred shares. And then next week, um, week 19, the time reduces and then the stock price changes. So the stock price decreases and with it, the D1 value decreases. And with that, the delta value decreases. And now in order to calculate how many shares we need to own to offset our 100,000 short call options, now we need to own just this delta value here multiplied by the short call options rounded. So now we only need to own 45,800 shares. And in order to get to that value, or we're going to take the number of shares we need to own this week and subtract the number of shares we need to own last week. And we find that that's a de decrease of 6,400 shares that we need to own. And then we'll just keep doing this every week. So every week we'll find the new number of shares we need to own based on the delta and then either add or subtract the number that gets us to that. Here we get to week 17. We find that we need 19,600 more shares than we needed the week before, so we buy that many. And then we can figure out what is the cost of these shares. So the cost of the shares for the week is just gonna be equal to the number of them that we purchased multiplied by what was the stock price for that week. And then we can just shoot that formula all the way down and we'll see that 
these values like this one matches here, this negative 308 matches here, et cetera. So we figured out our cost of shares each week. Now we need to figure out our cumulative cost, including the interest. The reason that interest is relevant here is because in order to buy these shares, we are actually going to borrow money at this rate of interest so that we can buy the shares. And then when the amount of shares that we need to own decreases, we can sell some of those shares to reduce the amount of money that we need to borrow to reduce our interest expense, etc. So this interest cost is going to be a vital component and how much we need to pay to continue our dynamic delta hedging of this position. And so in order to do that, we can just take for the first week, it's just going to be equal to the cost of the shares. And then we'll find this interest cost, which is going to be equal to that cumulative cost, including the interest multiplied by the interest rate. But so that would give us an annualized interest cost. And to get it into weekly, we just multiply it by one week divided by 52 weeks per year. That tells us that we have 2.5K of interest in the first week. Now we can find the cumulative cost, including interest, for the second week by taking the cumulative cost, including interest, for the prior week, adding the cost of shares for this week, and then also adding the interest cost from the previous week. And that'll give us this value. And then again, we'll have the same calculation for our interest cost the following week. And we can just shoot those formulas all the way down. And then we'll see that we eventually get to the point where we're pretty much matching with what John Hall has for each of his values. You'll see the cumulative cost, including interest, might be off by like 0.1 here, there. And I think it's just rounding issues on his end. And so there you have it. You can see how a strategy is implemented to offset the delta of your position so that any given week, your delta is as close to zero as possible. So if there's small changes in the underlying stock price, you will have close to zero dollars of losses or zero dollars of gains. Now, thank you for watching this video. If you would like to download the file that I created in this video, you can check out the link in the pinned comment or the description. And if you need help with finance tutoring, you can check out my website, rhinoconnellfinance.com. Thank you for watching.